it went viral. Pretty much. Despite the fact that Golden State has assembled the best starting roster in history, I'm a warrior. The NBA still remains LeBron James's league. Odds of LeBron James winning seven championships, one in. Come on, man. Never before has a player hosted a decision on live television. James ended up taking his talents to South Beach and basically alienating every Cleveland Cavalier fan in the process. Whatever you think of him, LeBron is still the best player in the NBA, even at the age of 33. He's also perhaps the best all-around basketball player in history in terms of sheer talent, will, and physicality. Sorry, MJ. As we've shown before, King James isn't perfect. So we've compiled another top 10 embarrassing moments from LeBron's time in the spotlight. Accidental adjustment. Oh, Moments before the start of the fourth game of the 2015 NBA Finals, a series that might sound familiar as LeBron's Cavaliers face the Golden State Warriors yet again, James was caught on camera adjusting his shorts and perhaps taking the term tip off a bit too seriously. The King accidentally showed the nation his prints, and while the wardrobe malfunction only lasted a split second, people all over the world posted images of James's junk all across the internet. The funny thing is that even legitimate publications picked up the story and posted the grainy still images of James's family jewels. Is it the Frank or the beans? The Cavs were actually up two games to one before game four, but the tip slip must have been a bad omen. They were blown out 103 to 82 in that game and went on to lose the series. No! According to people in the know, James was embarrassed by the gaffe. If I was him, I just walk around my out like what? <laughs> We've seen it on ABC. But was confident that it would go away soon. Yeah! Unfortunately, as James would later find out, the internet is forever. Liking this video so far? Show us some love and slam dunk that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Dunked on and bumped by Jason Tatum. Then he taunted LeBron James. The dunk heard around the world is the most recent addition to this list. It occurred during a 2018 playoff game between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Boston Celtics. On May 27th, in what was the seventh game of a best of seven series, rookie Jason Tatum shocked the basketball world. Tatum, who was only 20 years old, took a pass outside the three-point line and drove it to the lane. In an ill-fated attempt to block Tatum, LeBron moved into the paint and redefined the meaning of getting posterized. What you say? We all saw the result. The monster dunk happened with only 6.39 left in the fourth quarter. It brought the Celtics to within two points, with the Cavs leading 71-69 to in crunch time. But you know what they say, don't wake the sleeping giant. While that play was something that LeBron haters will likely latch on to, they want another ring the next year, thanks to Ray Allen, gets my spurs. It didn't affect the outcome of the game. Though Tatum's dunk will live forever on the internet, it perhaps motivated the best player in the world to take over the game. LeBron dropped 35 of the Cavaliers' 87 points. He also put up 15 rebounds and nine assists. The King ended up one assist short of a triple-double, and the Cavs went on a 16-10 run and onto a fourth straight NBA Finals appearance. Nice try, though, Jason. High school days. I let my coaches and my friends come up to me and say, LeBron, what's, what's going on with all this? LeBron James has been anointed as the next Michael Jordan since his days at St. Vincent St. Mary High School in Akron, Ohio. In 2002, while still just a junior, he made the cover of Sports Illustrated with the title of The Chosen One, and he's lived up to that moniker. LeBron would have been the number one pick in last year's draft. That should give you an indication of what kind of talent he is. He's been able to accomplish so many feats, becoming everything people expected him to be, and perhaps more. I've seen him play, he's very talented. However, even back then, things weren't perfect for the future King of Cleveland. This youngster was stripped of his eligibility during his senior season at St. Vincent St. Mary's because he violated the rules. LeBron accepted a gift of two sports jerseys valued at about $900 from a store in Cleveland. Because of that, the Ohio High School Athletic Athletic Association ruled him ineligible for the final five regular season games and the playoffs. I never considered that. You know, um, it wasn't even the thought. You know, you really can't even 
do that. His team was also forced to forfeit a win that they'd had over Akron Buktal, ruining their perfect record. Considering all the money and free advertising that school received thanks to LeBron, it's insane that he wasn't allowed to profit from his then-budding fame, considering how fleeting a professional sports career can be. This still counts as an embarrassing moment, though. LeBron loses horse game to David Kalb. Sorry. Oh! Did you let me do that? Did I just score on you? Even if you don't follow the NBA or sports in general, there's still a very good chance that you've heard of LeBron James. On the other end of the spectrum, you have David Kalb. Who, you ask? That's right, David Kalb, a warehouse worker who played James in a game of horse during a promotional stop at Venice Beach, California. The game came not long after James had returned from the Beijing Olympics. LeBron James recently went bald and social media had an absolute Oh, sorry, this is a joke from 2007. Where he had won gold. Considering that, and the fact that he was smack dab in the middle of his prime, there's no chance that some random warehouse worker could beat the best basketball player in the world at anything, let alone horse, a game predicated on making tough shots. Well, it turns out that Kalb was a hustler. And everyone loves a hustler, don't they, man? I just can't help it. He had a ton of trick shots up his sleeve. It was amazing to see the best player on the planet bested by a regular person. It gave LeBron haters ammunition to add to their trolling. You are my bitch, LeBron James. But not really, not really. LeBron wears suit shorts to the 2018 finals. You raised an eyebrow a little bit at the matching suits, right? <laughs> 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 there are arguably really important and borderline terrifying things going on in the world. Shut up and dribble. But there's nothing more terrifying, complicated, and confusing than what LeBron James wore to Game 1 of the 2018 NBA Finals. Though James wore an expensive suit, people were quick to mock his suit pants, which weren't pants at all, but rather suit shorts. The real question is, what are those? While LeBron isn't the first NBA or NFL player to rock suit shorts, everything he does is news. So it was hard not to laugh when you first saw his wardrobe game. Stop it. Get some help. The suit shorts were designed by Tom Brown, according to USA Today, because there were thousands of articles about these shorts from credible sources. Is this your game? Who's about to lead you into the future? Come on, brother! Brown designed suits for most of the Cavs, and they like to wear similar suits before games as a sign of unity, which means that LeBron forced them to dress like him because, well, he's LeBron. Ty Lu, the head coach of the Cavaliers, said of the disaster, I mean, it's pretty cool. Like, at first, when we lost our first game, we did it, and I knew it would be a story. But overall, it just stands for unity, like as one, going on the floor, having the same jersey and uniform on. I think it's pretty cool. Sure, I guess. Is there nothing that can be done? No one wants to join LeBron in LA. Unable to play for Team LeBron R from the Cleveland Cavaliers, Kevin Love. Our first top 10 embarrassing moments in LeBron James's career video had to cover the whole decision fiasco. Can we put him now in the same category of a Michael Jordan who never left Chicago? James is hyper aware of his image, despite those suit shorts. No. And clearly didn't want to make the same mistake this offseason. He eventually chose to sign with the Lakers. The four-year deal will pay him over $150 million. The Lakers have the most famous fans of any team in the NBA. And for the most part, it appears that celebrities are excited to be able to watch James play at their home arena for over 40 times a season. Unfortunately for James and the Lakers, that enthusiasm isn't universal. The world needs you, LeBron. Not in Cleveland. There are actually a few rational reasons as to why people don't or didn't want LeBron on the Lakers. And despite some of the more emotional reactions, which we'll get to later, some of these anti-LeBron people have laid out their line of reasoning pretty well, at least online. The first group of people don't believe that James is a good fit for what the Lakers do on the court. They say he is a ball-dominant player, and because the Lakers roster is so young, that could have a negative impact on the growth of players like Lonzo Ball. The second group don't 
don't want him to join because they think that James would threaten the legacies of some of the greatest players in Los Angeles Lakers history. The third line of reasoning is that LeBron will basically take over the team and add a bunch of players that he wants to play with, and considering his age, once he leaves, the team will end up in complete disarray, like the Cavs were after he left the first time, not to mention what became of the Miami Heat after he left, although some would argue that it was more complex than just James leaving. So while a majority of people in LA are psyched that the king is there, I told you to call him LA bitch. <laughs> some are wary of what might happen to the team. Uh, just as, as an NBA fan, uh, looking at the league, it, it just creates that, that suspense that uh, I think we all appreciate. Getting swept in the 2018 finals. Boom, 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 boom. Hit the rolling stone with the rolling yarn. Tag portfolio. Before the 2018 NBA Finals, it was said by those in the know that the outcome of that series against the Golden State Warriors would determine whether or not LeBron would end up staying in Cleveland. And because the Cavs were absolutely decimated in the finals this year, getting trounced in four games, it was clear that LeBron was going to make some drastic changes, either to his then current team or on whatever team he was going to join. While the Cavs had faced the Warriors in the finals every year from 2015 through this past season, it appears the Cavs had lost their ability to compete or overcome the sheer onslaught of talent that the Warriors put on the basketball court. Sure, the Cavs came back from a 3-1 to deficit during the 2016 finals and won a championship, but this year that fight was gone for the Cavs. When Kyrie Irving bounced for Boston, he left a gaping hole in that lineup. And so LeBron decided to just make a clean break and attempt a fresh start in the Western Conference with the most iconic team in the league. LeBron mural in LA gets defaced. A tribute to the king is targeted and the criminal act is all caught on camera. As we learned earlier, not everyone in Los Angeles is excited about the prospect of James joining their favorite team. The situation that perhaps best explains that comes from a painted mural by graffiti artist Fernando Valdez that stated that James was the king of LA. The mural had a realistic likeness of James in a Lakers jersey and was relatively large as it took up the entire back wall of a restaurant that is getting a ton of free press. I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion. It was just a piece of art. It was all it was meant to do was welcome LeBron. A Twitter account titled Laker Fanbase offered people $300 to destroy the mural, and apparently someone took them up on it. They used gold spray paint to write on the mural. They wrote, No King, We Don't Want You, La Fraud, and Three and Six, which was an allusion to James's record in the NBA Finals. Valdez painted over that graffiti and attempted to compromise with the anti LeBron people by removing the of, so the mural just said King and LA. However, as was caught on a surveillance camera, Another fan decided to deface the rest of the mural, splashing paint all over James's gigantic face. It prompted the restaurant and Valdez to erase the ruined mural with white paint, a sad testament to the state of fandom these days. LeBron throws a tantrum during game one of the finals. We can't have anyone freak out out there, okay? Gotta keep our composure. In the first game of the 2018 NBA Finals, JR, or Psychotic Blade as he's known in China, committed such a boneheaded play that people are still struggling to even explain the logic behind it. It's a gift and a curse. In the series opener, the Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors were tied 107 to 107. With about five seconds left, JR rebounded a missed free throw from teammate George Hill and for some inexplicable reason, decided to dribble the ball out towards half court and run out the clock. Critics say it doomed the entire series. Bad tongues opined that LeBron had a meltdown. The King was so upset, he admitted he punched a whiteboard in the Cavs locker room before overtime and suffered a bone contusion on his dominant hand. The reality is, is that you got swept. Despite LeBron's heroic 51 points, the Cavs ran out of gas and never stood a chance in overtime, or really, the rest of the series. But it's LeBron's reaction that might hurt his legacy over the long run. As some say, he handled it like a spoiled brat, not the fearless leader he has shown to be time and time again. Pizza with the King? He was very familiar, very familiar. First day on the job. Yeah, I'm learning.
LeBron came out of his impromptu Twitter hiatus and teased that he wanted to visit a pizza place in Culver City in Los Angeles County. Blaze Pizza was running a special where people could get free pizza during a three-hour window last week. During that time, James alluded that he would make a stop and pick up some slices. Of course, that meant multiple Blaze locations were completely overwhelmed with eager fans who wanted free pizza and to hang out with LeBron. LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James. Turns out, LeBron name-dropped Blaze Pizza and lured hundreds of people to multiple locations because, surprise, surprise, he's one of the original investors in the chain. He once even appeared in a Blaze Pizza commercial, serving food and talking with customers who seemed unaware that they were in the presence of greatness. So while he's done a great job of branding and advertising for his restaurants, it very well could have backfired over the long term. In any case, it sure backfired at the time. Some people weren't super happy that he used them that way. Though he didn't promise anything, once people realized what he was doing and why he did it, it didn't sit well with them. Perhaps that's where the paint came into play. Since you've watched right to the end, why not check out our other Embarrassing LeBron Moments video? And if you haven't already, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell.